Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going in with another Scrafty team. Uh, this one I have Scrafty up front with Galarian Stunfisk and Alolan Ninetales. This is a Charm Alolan Ninetales. Um, I haven't really used Galarian Stunfisk. I've had it for about a season, but not really wanting to use it. Mine is a 98% if you all want to know. Uh, I think it's 15, 15, I think it's 14, 15, 15 actually. Um, I'll make sure of that, I guess, before the start uh, uh, in the comments below or something like that. All right, well, the whole point of this video is that Galarian Stunfisk is super bulky. Uh, I am using it as the safe swap. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. But first, if you haven't, definitely hit that subscribe button as it helps me out a ton here on YouTube. And yeah, now let's get into it. All right, so this first game is not really a game. Uh, they came in with Omnistar, and I guess what they had in the back was also weak to Scrafty, so they just left, but I left this in because I always show my full sets. Um, I'm going to be showing you two sets today, and this is set one. All right, second set, Mana Buzz. All right, this is a bad lead, but everything we have in the back is good against this. Plus, Scrafty, in some shield scenarios, can actually get through Mana Buzz, so we know we have that, at least in the back. Uh, Ferrothorn coming in, so unlike Great League, this is actually a pretty decent matchup for Stunfisk. Um, I believe in Great League, it is much harder to win because the, um, I guess it's Power Whip. The Power Whips are actually hitting a lot harder. And we're actually going to make it to three, um, three Earthquakes here. Because they stayed in a little bit too long on the Mana Buzz, we got a little bit of extra energy. And it's going to take two Earthquakes to KO this as it's neutral damage. Uh, we're also taking neutral damage from the Bullet Seeds and the Power Whips as well. So, I mean, we're going to get a little lower here. But, uh, like I said, two Earthquakes is enough to KO, and we've already got a shield advantage, too. So all we need to do, we don't even necessarily need to win this matchup. Um, Mana Buzz does have a little bit of energy, as they did stay in. But at this point, having a shield advantage, we maybe can use Scrafty to get through the Mana Buzz. The only thing is, I'm assuming there's another Galarian, there's a Galarian Stunfisk in the back. What I meant is there's probably another Steel in the back. So we have to be a bit worried about that. I am going to actually use the shield here. Uh, we did CMP tie, and Galarian Stunfisk, being a very bulky mon, rarely wins CMP against uh, many mon in this league. So, uh, a little unfortunate that we didn't get to there before the shield, but also, you know, it worked out. We're able to now switch the lead off into our Charmer. We don't have to shield anything on the Lowland Ninetales uh, against the Mandibuzz. We can actually go for a full farm down, if that's what we so choose to do. Um, I'm assuming in the back, like I said, is either a steel type or a, um, I guess it could be their own Alola Ninetales, uh, is possible. Or a charm, or a, a fairy type of some sort would also work. Um, actually, that would be pretty weak against Galarian Stunfisk. Anyways, I'm gonna go for the full farm down here. This match is gonna take forever because Amanda Buzz is super bulky. Um, I actually wrote a list of all the Pokemon I have that I want to um, get XL'd, and it's going to cost me like 1.5 million dust and a ton of XLs that I currently don't have. So I'm going to also need some events, um, especially for like Politoed. And I don't think Mandibuzz is ever going to get an event, so just keep hatching those eggs. They do end up coming with Alolan Ninetales here. Uh, it does have Powder Snow. I'm going to just go for the Dazzling Gleam. So, if you saw in one of my recent shorts, I actually had um, this, Sci what is it, Psyshock on this, uh, uh, Psybeam? Psy I forget the name of it. And um, I actually re-TM'd this again to have Dazzling Gleam because I figured if I have Charm, they're probably going to think I have the Psychic move, and they're probably not going to go for the Shield. If I start throwing out the Dazzling Gleams, yeah, it takes a ton of time to get to, and maybe it's not going to work out most of the time, but... You'll see in these videos, it works out more than once. I actually think it's pretty interesting. Um, I think more often than not, is probably not going to be best, but, you know, it worked out a few times here. All right, Jellicent lead. This is pretty good. Actually, most Jellicents seem to stay in, um, so I do try to just go for the extra. It's always going to take two foul plays anyways, so I don't care if they get in the Bubble Beam on us. Um, as we are going to need to go two foul plays, and then we can just go for a farm down after that anyways. So they get the Bubble Beam. They actually switch into Defense Deoxys. Okay. An even bulkier Mon than the Stunfisk. But I'm going to throw this one foul play, see if I can get it lower, and then come in with G-Fisk. Um, should be close to where the Earthquake and a Farm Down is possible. It's going to be really close. 
Um, there might be a huge farm down to go to, but I do think I will go for the farm down here. Really no, like, the thing is, DD doesn't really pressure me in any sort of way. Uh, the, yeah, the counters are super effective, but the charge moves are all resisted. So Thunderbolt's double resisted, Rock Slide double resisted, and then um, I think this person actually went for Psycho Boost all the way through. Psycho Boost single resisted and lowers the attack damage of the DD. So even if we took like three more Psycho Boosts here, we would be fine because every time he's getting reduced to attack until he reaches that limit of minus four, which he's at currently. So I'm just going for the full farm down here. They'll probably end up switching out again pretty soon, but I'm so close to that earthquake. I'll probably throw the earthquake at the Jellicent if they do come in. They do come in with the Jellicent. Switch wasn't up, or maybe I would have just switched right away, but we're throwing the move, and then we'll go for the switch. Keep that um, G Fisk behind for later. And I believe the DD is pretty low at this point. Um, probably low enough to get countered down by Scrafty if we don't get too low here. But um, gonna go for this foul play. I think we actually end up CMP tying here, which is a mistake. Yeah. But it's okay. The only thing we have to worry, well, the only thing I really have to worry about is that a foul play is not going to KO from this range, so I'm not even going to try to reduce, I, I thought about actually just going for a great here, and then I was like, you know what, this probably doesn't KO anyways, I'm just going to go for the full excellent, we don't get it down, and it's actually got a lot of HP left here, and I'm going to go for this power up punch, I think, because I'm ne not going to be able to get it down beforehand, and uh, we can just see what he wants to do here, uh, since this will KO on either front. And he does end up shielding this, which is really interesting. And then I just so happen to go for a power-up punch here. I do see in the top right corner that they have switched in Alola Ninetales. So I'm just going to switch in my Alola Ninetales right after this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I still had the uh, Galarian Stunfisk up. So we do end up seeing that it is charmed. They only have one shield. I'm definitely going to be able to get the two rock slides here as long as they don't sneak in any charms. So I'm trying to throw at the rate... Uh, the same rate that charms coming through so three mud shots for two charms and hopefully that leaves, leaves me enough to get to this rock slide we actually have a ton of extra hp we could have actually let two charms in uh, one charm does come in there but we still have our own alola nine tails in the back that is a charmer as well so we're in obviously insanely good shape here two shields up um and scrafty has play against both of the other mon uh even though DD is going to be doing super effective to us, the fact of the matter is that uh, we have a little bit more health than he does. I decide that they throw this instantly, so I'm probably just assuming this is a weather ball. Gonna go ahead and try to get the two shield here. I mean, I'm not really trying to two shield flex, it's just that they threw right away, so it just seemed like there was no way that wasn't a... Uh... Yeah, we just farmed down the DD, GG. I'm gonna throw this weather ball, the jealous and super low anyways this game's over anyways what i was saying is they just seem to have thrown right away before i even showed my mon maybe i lagged but it just seemed like oh well this isn't going to be too much but it actually maybe i should have just shielded because it could have been dazzling gleam although they hadn't farmed enough to get there so it definitely couldn't have been but no use to not use your shields really interesting pick by our opponent here so the Surfs would be hurting Galarian Stunfisk, but the Dragon Tail is actually resisted completely by my backline, being Fairy and Steel types. But I decided to stay in this matchup. I don't know it very well, but I imagine Scrafty's okay in this matchup. Um, I think Melodic is actually super bulky. Uh, even though it took a lot of damage from these counters, you'll see that this foul play really doesn't do as much as I, I had hoped it would do something like 40%. Definitely didn't do that much. And Dragon Tail on Melodic is actually so good. Surf, obviously, is really good. The problem is its third move. I don't think it has a very good third move. I think it runs Blizzard and Hydro Pump. Maybe even Outrage. Y'all can let me know in the comments uh, if I'm right on that one. I know it definitely has Blizzard. Um, I'm not sure about its other possible moves, though. They end up going for the shield here, and then I just decide I'm not even going to shield at all. I think I'm going to come in. I, I thought maybe I could come in and just farm down with Galarian Stunfisk, and then I was like, that's too risky, Surf's super effective, I'll just come in with my Charmer and get the get the two or three Charms in right here. And the Dragon Tails, like I said, resisted, so look how much damage we're not taking. <laughs> All right, we'll see if they have a hard counter. If they don't, we'll make our choice after that. I think they end up coming with an Alolan... Oh, they come in with a Jirachi. Yeah, so... 
Ninetales doesn't want to see this Jirachi, but Galarian Stunfisk is fine with it. So now we just have to hope that what's in the back isn't going to be strong against Galarian Stunfisk. I actually, right now, I'm thinking it is probably Galarian Stunfisk, but we have two shields, they have one, and then they don't shield out here, or they don't uh, switch out here. So then I'm like, oh, I have this huge advantage against a possible Galarian Stunfisk in the back. Ends up being Mandibuzz, which is perfect for us. Obviously, the order being switched here would have been even better, but uh, I'm deciding right now I'm going to shield 100% everything the Mandibuzz does because... Everything Jirachi has is resisted. I believe it has Doom Desire, Psychic, and Play Rough, something like that. There's definitely a charm, a, a fairy move. Um, so we resist everything that that does. So we'll just shield everything Mana Buzz does, since the foul plays will be neutral. Um, there's also a possibility of switching out into the Alola Ninetales when I get there, maybe to snipe the Mana Buzz. The only thing I have to be worried about is letting Jirachi have too much farm, but I actually think Jirachi left with 100 energy, so I'm not too worried about Jirachi at this point. Um, I could possibly get a Weather Ball off on the Jirachi as well, and then we're definitely not shielding anything Mandibuzz does here. I think he did this because he switched so late on the Jirachi, trying to get up to 100 energy, that he's just trying to wait for his timer to come back up, which it now comes back up. And if we get this Weather Ball, we'll be able to... Uh, Probably not force a shield, but I'm also not shielding this either. Let the Doom Desire KO us. Doom Desire is such a strong move and obviously super effective. It probably would kill us from like 70-80%. And then at this point, the Jirachi is super low. Not going to shield anything. Mana Buzz, even though it did throw, could have extra energy. And there's really no reason to, to shield this. It's a steel move on a steel Pokemon. Um, I think Rock Slide's probably going to be enough here. They may get to one more Doom Desire in two confu in one or two confusions, but uh, it is super low, and I don't know that Jirachi is that bulky. I think it gets to like level thirty something. Um, one of my locals is actually using Jirachi and got to like thirty four, thirty five hundred, something like that. And uh, yeah, I wish I had some videos of that because y'all, I know y'all would love. I would love to see uh, some Jirachi play. Um, in general, and uh, and it, you'll have to dump a ton of rare candy into it to give it a second move. Maybe you already have it built for Great League. The only thing that really stops me from doing it is my Jirachi is really terrible, anyways. But I feel like Jirachi has a ton of play in Great League, and it would be tough if a meta came around where Jirachi was really good in Great League, and we don't have that second Jirachi like we have two Mews now, uh, to where I can use it in both leagues. So. All right, last game of the first set. This is going to be Scrafty against Typhlosion. Pretty neutral matchup, and then obviously Typhlosion's really good against our back line. So not something we really want to get into. Um, I think they end up over-farming a ton because uh, we both don't throw when we have the move here, and I believe they're just trying to get an extra Shadow Claws while we throw our charge move, which is pretty smart if it works out. Um, obviously, Typhlosion's attack stat's pretty high, so it would win CMP when we do CMP, so, obviously, that was not a CMP. Now, he did end up shielding that one, so I'm actually willing to shield this. I did CMP tie on this move, so hopefully he can't just switch out. And, like I said, we need to win the front matchup with Scrafty. I don't want him to go into, like, this where we get hit by a Blast Burn, and then they go into this two-shield scenario that we can't get past. So, now that we have taken Typhlosion out, it's like, okay, great. <laughs> um, Alone the Ninetales is going to be good against this... So I'm just going to stay in because I can't switch out. Otherwise, they'll have, well, I could actually switch out to see what their last Mon is. Um, actually, probably will throw Foul Play and then switch because we still have Scrafty. And I have to be worried about something like a G-Fisk in the back. Uh, I don't want to go into a G-Fisk mirror. Uh, that's just going to be really random. So I'm going to save a little bit of Scrafty for the back in case we need it. Not going to shield anything here on Alola Ninetales. Um, if they have something like Mandibuzz in the back, even better for me. Mandibuzz does pair well with Typhlosion, and it does pair well with Politoed in general, um, as far as two, uh, like, couples. So it being on a team of three actually makes sense as well, but we always have the G-Fisk in the back for possible Mandibuzz anyways. Actually ends up being an Ice type. It is a Shadow Obama Snow. I wish I had a Shadow Obama Snow. I do have a regular Obama Snow that is XL'd, so I can't be... Um, you know, I can't be too greedy there. I, I have so few XLs that, you know, if I have one, 
I gotta stick with it. But definitely don't have any more Excels. I think there was a, a Snover event a long time ago. That's why I have that. Yeah. I think when Excels first came out. Anyways, I think as soon as we show the G Fisk here, they're just gonna quit because there's really nothing Abomasnow is gonna do to G Fisk. It is neutral to go for Energy Ball, but gonna be taking super effective from these Rock Slides. So, yeah, GG. And that was a. Was that a 5 0? I think that was a 5 0 on that first set. So, <laughs> yeah, 5 0. So, uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty, I mean, uh, Ultra League Remix has been pretty tough, I think, for a lot of people, including myself, who don't have a lot of XLs to really switch around when the meta switches up. Um, I think next season, hopefully, I'll have a Polytoad. I mean, we're kind of close. I, maybe I need an event. <laughs> But uh, hopefully I'll have a Politoed, maybe even a Manda Buzz. All right, coming into this matchup, weird lag in the beginning here, but uh, the timer actually ends up coming up, so no, not, no, no harm, no foul. And it is a Jellicent lead, so I decide, yeah, I mean, this is obviously good for me. I decide to stay in, try to get the extra counter. Ooh, they actually almost caught. They did catch. Dang it. But what I can do to undo this catch is... I can throw four counters and then switch into my Alola Ninetales since Alola Ninetales is just going to take this out for sure. And then I'll have a lot of energy going back into, and then I'm I'm struggling here because I'm like, please. I'll have a lot of energy going back into that Jellicent matchup so that they don't have this huge energy at lead against my Mon there. But I'm also going to have this Dazzling Glean, I'm pretty sure, for the Mandaba, uh, for the uh, Jellicent because we're getting these four extra charms through. Um, I don't know exactly how many charms it takes. Well, let's count it. Five, six. Uh, I'm not going to shield anything. If they get to double Shadow Ball, they get to double Shadow Ball. If I don't get to the move, I don't get to the move. But I want to make it to this move and do a lot of damage. And if I don't, I don't. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it looks like 12. If this is a Bubble Beam, I believe we'll live. And then we'll probably live a Hex. And then we'll probably be able to get this. Um, yeah, we'll be able to live a hex here and get the Dazzling Gleam off. So I already forgot what I counted to. Was that 12? I, so it looks like 12 charms to a Dazzling Gleam. Good to know for uh, anyone in this video who really wanted to know that. I did not know that. But, uh, yeah. Oh, we have a G Fisk for this, and that's just game. It is Powder Snow, which technically gives you some amount of play, but uh, not really. And then the Jealous in the back obviously has no real play against the uh, Scrafty either. So I'm not going to lie, I'm winning a lot of leads here. I think, uh, well, this is actually pretty neutral, but I think they're going to switch out. And if switching it into this Ninetales, I do a really, really slow swap into my own uh, Stunfisk. What I want to do in this matchup is actually come out with close to an Earthquake. Um, and we have a lot of time to like dictate that and really play this out in the way that we want. So I'm going to just, um, they definitely don't die to one. So you can throw one whenever you want. Uh, the second rock slide, I don't know if the second rock slide even KOs either, but then you end up farming down. And then I want to, like I said, I want to come out of this matchup with an earthquake to pressure, oh, the second one definitely KOs, to pressure a shield onto the uh, Snorlax. Uh, getting a shield advantage there will obviously be great. What this game may come down to is a Alolan Ninetales 2 shield. Um, so I want to try to prepare my mindset for that uh, because I don't know that I actually want to shield Scrafty in the Snorlax matchup. You will survive a foul play. We get to 100, not foul play, a superpower. And um, yeah, we do get to 100 energy here, and then I decide to throw. This will definitely KO. And then we're not going to die to the Lick Damage before I get two Mud Shots and an Earthquake off. So this will either pressure a shield or do a ton of damage. And I'm good with either of the scenarios, to be honest. If I get it in counter down range, great. If I take a shield, great. We're in the two shield uh, Lola Ninetales scenario. Uh, possibly. Hopefully the thing in the back's not. Okay, it actually ends up being a Charmer. So Charmer versus, versus Charmer. Neither of us are... Well, either both of us are going to use one shield or neither of us is going to shield at all. And in both of those scenarios, I'm going to end up a shield up against their Snorlax, and that's going to be GG. Stunfisk. Obviously, this is a great lead. I really hope this is the Armored Mewtwo matchup. Absolutely, it is. I make a huge mistake in this matchup, y'all. But luckily, the game after this is almost the same exact team. I And this is where you really... Um, you're going to make mistakes in matchups. Everyone makes them. I make them. No one's perfect. The thing is, you need to learn from these mistakes. So I stayed in this matchup, 
and I decided, you know what, I can just get to two foul plays. I'm going to shield once. This is probably dynamic punch. The problem is I didn't think about what was going to happen later. How do I beat this Galarian Stun Fisk when it's up shields against me? Um, because I've waited so long to switch at this point that this is going to end up KOing. And then they're going to come in with probably, yeah, this is exactly the worst case scenario for me. So now I'm like, do I switch to the G-Fisk? Do I switch to the A9? Or do I just stay in and then not really have a plan against the G-Fisk? So what I could do is switch into G-Fisk at this point, which I think is what I end up doing. Because even though it's a super effective against me matchup, I really need to save this Scrafty. And then I'm hoping that these, this um, Politoed just can't take out my G-Fisk. But, I mean, this is where everything just goes sideways. Definitely, I should have switched out of the matchup. G-Fisk beats Armored Mewtwo. Stay in that matchup. Maybe throw one foul play is fine. Get it to half. Get it in Earthquake range. Take it out with the Earthquake. Keep alignment. And then be able to win this uh, this game. But, yeah, like I said, this game went all sorts of wrong. Um, my own fault. But, luckily, next game is very similar team. They do end up switching into this G-Fisk, their own. Which is kind of what I wanted. So, things are almost working out the only thing is they're gonna have this huge shield advantage um they have to go for the earthquake here uh rock slide might ko i don't think rock slide ko's but i think one more mud shot will which is an even worst case scenario because they farm up to basically 100 energy uh not 100 but they farm up to a lot of energy here and then they get a little bit of extra later and then now i have this crafty and at this point i just have to make a call and I decide that they're not going to go for the Earthquake first. Um, they do go for the Earthquake. <laughs> so there were still chances of me winning this game, actually. Even switching out late into that Galarian Stunfisk into a bad matchup. So two things to take. Um, yeah, definitely a big misplay in the beginning. And then um, still had chances to win this. Had to make a call. Definitely just never give up in your games. At least I don't. But one Weather Ball actually landing here would be significantly good obviously this is going to shield they still have the polytoed with like 40 percent hp in the back i'm obviously not going to win this game but like i said i always play out my games and um if i somehow can land a weather ball on this it at least it would take this out uh they're definitely going to have to shield this galarian stun fisk i would think uh because charm damage is possibly too much for polytoed to handle we definitely would live a weather ball from this range uh, from a polytoed yeah not a lot more to say to here. The rock slide's definitely into chaos. So we're never going to make it to this weather ball, and that's GG. All right, so uh, G Fisk and Armored Mewtwo seem to be a good pair, and it seems like the third thing in the back can just be something good. Doesn't necessarily matter that much. All right, so we have a Stun Fist lead here in the third, fourth, third, fourth game. And they switched armor to Mewtwo. Luckily, this happened right away. I have all of that game of knowledge now. And I'm going to throw this foul play. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch out to Galarian Stunfisk. Because I want to have an answer to this Galarian Stunfisk later. I don't want to get trapped in by uh, switch timers. And you just see me. I switch out right away. Very great learning experience here. Learn from your mistakes so that you don't make them again. Um, whenever you're using a new team, obviously you're going to have a lot more mistakes because you don't really know the best case scenarios in all, um, in, like in all situations, the way that we have it down for like Hypnos Crafty and Munchlax or, or Umbreon or Licky Licky. So like I said before, we got it into Earthquake range. I'm just going to throw this Earthquake. We got hit by a Dynamic Punch. The next Dynamic Punch probably wouldn't KO, but it would get us super low to the point where they could actually shield and end up confusioning down if they wanted to go into a shield deficit, which I would do if I landed too um, as well. So it does seem like the back Pokemon here is going to be Meganium. So that's okay for Alola Ninetales. We do have the super effective Weather Balls. It is hard to get to because we are running Charm, but we are running Charm, so Charm does a lot of damage. Uh, and as long as we maintain uh, the switch, I actually have already decided at this point I probably won't shield alone the Nine Tails at all. Really good counting by our opponent. Um, I said it in my last long form video. There are so many freaking Meganiums out there right now. Um, this is a mon that you must have answers to, uh, or you must have. You don't have to have like hard counters like you see my team right here. We don't really have hard counters, but we have answers. Uh, it can be beaten by Scrafty. It can be beaten by Alone the Nine Tails. 
And um, yeah, if it doesn't throw the earthquake right, it can also be beaten by Galarian Stunfisk, I believe. Don't take my word for that Galarian Stunfisk one, but it does seem like if they don't really land the earthquake, what can they really do? All right, they did use one shield on the Galarian Stunfisk, so that is great. Leaves us in a shield advantage here. But like I said, I'm, I'm, this is a double shield scrafty game. If they take out this with Meganium, I don't really care that much. I'm going to come in with scrafty and go for like a farm down and start getting the pups ramped up against Meganium into the Galarian Stunfisk matchup. But what they'll probably do is they've built up in a lot of excess energy here. They're going to be able to throw a Frenzy Plant. I actually am going to shield at least one Frenzy Plant here. I can survive one Earthquake, and I can survive one Frenzy Plant. I don't know which does more, but I have two shields, right? So I'm going to shield one here, and then I can decide during... They switch into Galarian Stunfisk here. I can decide in this matchup what I want to do with the Earthquakes. Uh, I think I actually decide I'm going to let one through, because they're not going to farm down Scrafty with Vine Whip or Mud Shot, so I'm not really afraid of the fast attack damage. Uh, I think I can go for a Foul Play after these counters... Um, make it to enough energy for foul play to end up taking out this stun fisk um, which i think is actually the better play because they won't be able to make it to an earthquake if i go straight power up punch they'll get to another earthquake and it's possible that this meganium is going to get to another um, frenzy plant because they had just so much excess energy yeah and that's perfect they're definitely going to make it to another frenzy plant here so definitely good shield I don't think this power up punch actually KOs. Even though we're already pupped up once, this will be the second pup. Uh, I think it'll even one counter range though. Oh, it actually did KO. Nice. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. All right, GG. Learn from your mistakes, y'all. You're going to make mistakes and that's fine. But as long as you learn from them, then it's okay. All right, Skarmory. This is actually a really bad lead because unlike Great League, uh, Scrafty cannot just farm through a Skarmory. I am going to build up to a foul play and then throw it and then just switch into... Uh, Galarian Stunfisk. So technically, these uh, moves were desynced. They are at Sky Attack right now. So if they were going to uh, go for straight Sky Attack, I could actually swap the move. So I try to do that. And they didn't throw the move. And they're actually farming up a ton. So not great. Although this is actually a pretty good matchup for me. Almost always Galarian Stunfisk throws the Earthquake first. So if you're DD shielding the first move, not the worst idea. And most of them do it. But I had such a huge energy advantage coming from the Scar Skarmory matchup because they stayed in for two more air slashes that I can actually make it to two more earthquakes and get three earthquakes off on this DD, which is enough to KO it um, through one shield. So Rock Slide double resisted, Psycho Boost single resisted. So when they get uh, us lower, they're going to start throwing this Psycho Boost because you don't want to throw at the beginning because you're lowering your counter damage and really all you have against the G Fisk is this counter damage. So... Yeah, perfect. We're definitely going to make it. Even if they go for two Psycho Boosts right here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, the, the charge moves really don't do that much to uh, Stun Fisk here. And I don't need to go for any extra energy. I just want to throw this right away. And um, yeah, we have a shield advantage now against their Mon. And we also gained Switch. Um, the only thing is... This is actually my only good mon against the Skarmory. <laughs> um, Brave Bird would KO, but I don't think Sky Attack would. So I think we can make it to this Rock Slide. Which is probably going to pressure his shield. Yeah, we still live one more Sky Attack. They came in with seven Air Slashes. They got in one or two more, so they're around nine. They threw five. So they're at a Sky Attack right now. Possibly more. I may have miscounted during this video, but I know I was counting during the real time. But I don't think they'll be able to get two sky attacks off here. They'll only be able to get one, and I think a foul play will KO. Then we'll have one shield with Alola Ninetales in the back and Scrafty as well. And they end up having their own charm, Alola Ninetales. This is great for us. I'm just going to throw the Weather Ball. I don't have uh, the Psy Strike or whatever it is. <laughs> So I actually can't pressure it with any neutral moves, so I'm going to throw this resisted move at it just to get it lower since it had a little bit of charm damage on us. Uh, we want to take the HP advantage, and nothing else really matters. We still have the shield for Skarmory on our Scrafty, and we just need one more foul play to KO uh, the Skarmory, and these two will probably simultaneous KO. So great for us here. This is another win. I think this set we went 4-1. We learned from the one loss, so that one loss was actually fine. 
you know, if I'm if I'm taking a loss, I'd rather learn something so that I can use it in the future. And we actually used it in that set. <laughs> so the future came fast. Uh, but uh, yeah, this team's actually pretty good. Um, Galarian Stunfisk, I know is pretty hard for people to get, I guess. But um, yeah, uh, definitely hatch eggs, I guess. Or that's how I got it, at least. But oh that was a long video <laughs> so thank you all again for coming by the channel um your your um support is always just like outpouring and yeah i just want to thank you all so much for your support here on the channel and um to the support of my patreons patrick juan delightful daydream rodrigo cal marlon date josh lambert and norris jt791 um yeah, thank you all for uh, watching this video, and just thank you for being here on the channel. It actually means a lot to me. I'll see you in the next one.